everybody. Welcome back to Android App Addicts. I was going to say the episode number, but I honestly don't remember which one it is. Episode 400 something or other. Uh, the show where we talk about apps and phones, and uh, this week probably a little bit about turkey and dressing. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm happy to be back with you, and I, uh, of course, I'm joined by the people that you're here to see. The the one, the only, the inimitable door to door geek, Mr. Steve McLaughlin, and the executive Eric Ardini. Hi, gentlemen. Hey, Mark. I, I got the four one one on your um on your episode number. It's four one one. Oh, nice. Thanks. You're welcome. And that's why he's the manager. Yeah. I usually ask before we go, and I just forgot this time. That's what she. If we said had show that. notes, <laughs> I would know this sort of thing. Yes, yes, you would. <laughs> so I, I had an event. I'm just going to jump right in there. I had an event happen today that totally changed my mind about an upcoming thing. And this so rarely happens to me. But the new trailer mm-hmm. for Batman versus Superman has me totally excited to see the movie. Prior to that, I was not interested in any way in seeing Bat Affleck. But seeing that the new trailer that was just released last night, really, I'm super excited about it now. Huh. I have not been excited about that movie at all. I haven't seen that new trailer. I'll keep an eye out for it. What I did see, though, was... I can't remember what it's called now. It was on Showtime. It was uh, the fat guy from Jay and Silent Bob, Kevin Smith, talking about the Nick Cage Superman movie that didn't happen. That was fast a friggin' Yeah, I heard about that. There were a few test screenshots I've seen, but yeah, I haven't heard anybody talk about it. No, no. This was over a year into getting ready to be done. You know, they had multiple script rewrites. They had director picked out. They had some of the cast already picked out. They had Chris Rock picked out to be... um, uh, the uh, photographer, Jimmy Olsen, Ugh. Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. And they had all kinds of people already picked up for it. And the story behind what they were trying to do with the movie, Tim Burton was really interesting, but Tim Burton said very clearly, he's still bitter about the whole thing. And if you come to him when he's 80 years old or 90 years old, he's still going to say, I'm going to do that movie. <laughs> so he really wanted to do it. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a Burton fan. Uh, I just generally don't like anything he does. Well, you had to like, you had to like Batman with Michael Keaton. It was okay. Well, it was a Taco was Bell commercial. It was essentially what it was. Right. I'll say, and at its time in history, it was needed because Batman was dying. Right horrible death so the, i mean the first one the the first michael keaton one was just it was okay i mean on a scale of 10 it was a it was a six six and a half and then they did the burgess meredith penguin one and that was a two uh and then they the the val kilmer one right total switch that one was a lot of fun but not a good movie and i don't need it to be both sometimes it can be fun and not be a good movie and then schwarzenegger just <laughs> that was it that was all it could do batman and robin yeah Nobody wants to see Batman with nipples. Yeah, Chris O'Dowd. Um, yeah, it was just terrible. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'm excited about the new uh, Dawn of Justice based on the trailer. If you haven't seen it, go go YouTubeize it. You'll see it, and uh, I'm interested to see what your thoughts on it are. Well, saying YouTube, my thoughts on YouTube Red is I'm, I'm completely sold. I'm completely sold. I am obsessively sold on the idea of watching a video somebody sends me a link to, for instance, on my phone. Knowing that the video part is not going to be that special, playing the video and then hitting back and responding to them while I'm still hearing the video playing in the background. That kind of little thing. (laughs) Good touch. Also, I love the fact that, again, I can come down in the morning and say any song name and the kids, they're they're eating their breakfast, listening to music. Um, So I get unlimited Google Music and I get to Google uh, the uh, YouTube no ad stuff. And let me tell you something. I came very close multiple times in the last couple of years to literally quitting YouTube outright because of their ads, because certain flicks, certain videos had ads on them that I would not sit through. All right. I tried. I, I, the, we had the, yeah, the Google music or the, yeah, YouTube music or something last week. I, I tried. I thought I was on, I thought I was in and, uh, 
I haven't been able to find any place where I'm skipping commercials or, or doing anything cool like that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure if you just say YouTube Red uh, be, um, the, 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 the trial. Mm -hmm. It's like a 14-day trial I signed up for. No, it's a one-month trial. But I don't know. So that's your first problem. YouTube.com slash red. Bam. You go there, you click sign up for the trial. It's a month trial. And you get YouTube, YouTube music, YouTube gaming, and you get Google Play music. I'll try it again. Since, since I didn't take them up on it last time, or they didn't, whatever, maybe maybe I'll get a chance to get in there again. Uh, this is one of the things I think you're going to have to drag me into it. I, when when I see other people just thoroughly sold on it, maybe I will be, but I don't live in the YouTube ecosystem, and I think that's the difference. Uh, I don't go to YouTube m multiple times a day, even multiple times a week. I just don't. Uh, so I'm, I'm not seeing how it's worth $10 a month. Well, I mean, if you don't watch any network TV or any Comedy Central or any movie channels, you don't want cable for your house. I mean... Yeah. I mean, it, if you don't have the need, it's pointless. And I, I, I want to go back and, and mention we didn't do a show last week because it was Thanksgiving here in the United States. We took the day off. I uh, hope you had a great Thanksgiving, you the listening audience, and you, my fellow co-hosts. Anything, uh, any, uh, any uh, giant balls of flaming peanut oil around you as people tried to fry their turkeys? I, I no, we uh, we had actually. I had the in laws over. We had tacos here, so that wasn't too bad. I, I made a. Oh yes, the traditional New England taco. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm in the Midwest though, but um, I did make uh, a, a turkey breast on Thanksgiving Day itself, and, and we made gluten free pumpkin pie and gluten free stuffing, and and of course turkey's gluten free, so we were covered there. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Why would you make Anything gluten free? Oh, I have two two women in my in my house that are um, allergic to wheat. Are they actually allergic to wheat? Well, one of them's ac or, or, actually. Or did they just say they're gluten? -free? One of them's actually allergic to wheat, and one of them is probably celiac disease. But it wasn't confirmed because the doctor. No, no, celiac disease is allergic to wheat. No, okay. no, no. They're two different things. Yes. My uncle has it, and he's had it for his whole okay, life. Okay, when you have celiac disease, you are completely allergic to wheat. You cannot be allergic to wheat to the degree you have to worry about it unless you have celiac disease. Right. Yeah, my daughter is not allergic to wheat to the degree that she has to worry about it, but my wife is probably celiac. But they didn't do the test when she asked them to well, while they were there. I'll say that sucks because that means she can't enjoy normal beer. That's true, and she. So my heart goes out to her. Yeah. Yeah, about yeah, uh, three to five percent of the population has, uh, you know, real, honest to goodness gluten intolerance, and the other ninety-five percent just don't want you to enjoy your life. And uh, saying I'm gluten free <laughs> is a good way to make that happen. No, my my wife definitely she's been this way for um, almost two years, and it's definitely made a big improvement in her lifestyle. And um, so she wasn't when she was younger. She's I always had why, problems. They, they she had ulcers like when okay. she was young, young. Okay, because like everybody I've been talking to, it seems like they're either growing into or out of allergies at some time in their True. life. True. And I don't know if that was always the case. Yeah, the, the more you're uh, exposed to any one thing, the more likely you are to be allergic to it. I know when I've moved here mm. to southern uh, uh, Georgia, or excuse me, uh, northern Georgia uh, from East Texas three years ago, and each season my Georgia allergies uh, are more pronounced because I've spent more time here. And, and so that is a real thing. So I guess diabetes is allergic to sugar because well, <laughs> a lot of exposure. Diabetes is you work your, uh, your pancreas so hard that it gives up. It says, I can't take it anymore. I'm done. That's what diabetes is. Yeah, that's horrible. Um, I'll say I did have a very good Thanksgiving because I drove a mile down the road to my mother-in-law's house, who I've said in the past, I'm sorry for everyone else in the history of time. I have a fantastic mother-in-law, one of the best people I think I've met in my life. Went over there, and my dad brought my sister and my brother-in-law over. My brother-in-law has to be one of the coolest people, period, again. So we just had a good time. My kids act goofy. We ate turkey and stuffing. Did you, did you have to go over a river? Or through a woods? Uh, 
we literally had to cross over a creek. Does that count? Were there woods involved? Uh, there's trees all around okay, it. Perfect. Okay. You, we went over the river and through the woods to grandmother's through house. Grandmother's perfect. House. Yeah. Quite literally. So I had a really good time. I, I hope you had yourself a good time. Mark. I did indeed. Uh, I had a little more family than I needed. Um, you know, I'm sure everybody can relate to that. Uh, but uh, it was a good time. No, I don't know what you're, what you're saying. No, it's just, you know, uh, fish and house guests start to smell after three days. Family doesn't take that long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> eh? Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. So let's talk about some Android apps. Let's get off of this before I end up uh, headed for divorce or something. Uh, <laughs> Dor, start us off. Yeah, the first thing I'm going to bring uh, was also on the other AAA. Um, this, as soon as I saw this, I, I, it was like the movie, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. Uh, it was like a flashback, like, um, Ratatouille when the critic ate the Ratatouille and he got, or whatever, and he got thrust back to being a child in his mom's kitchen. When as soon as I saw this game, I had I, I, I got thrust back to like being 12 years old, covered in zits, sitting in the arcade playing Cruising USA. This is called Horizon Chase World Tour. Oh, they had this one on there? That, oh, man. Yeah. This is a great find. This, oh, installed this is already. A, <laughs> yeah. This is a great hybrid game is what I'm going to call it. Because it is old style gameplay with purpose with some purposeful pixelation but at the same time some of the game some of the aspects of the game looks newer and better um this to me is one of those games it is a very good blend of past present you know and uh gaming racing decent uh physics nothing fantastical um Works really good on the GPD. Bonus. Um, if you're at all a fan of old Cruising USA or behind the car racing, you you have to check out this game. Now, the first thing you download, you get San Francisco for free. Extra tracks, extra tracks cost money. It could have been 30 bucks. I think I would have still found a way to pay it. Yeah, this is this is beautiful. This is exactly the kind of, of uh, this is what mobile phones are good for in, in terms of casual gaming. It's great. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you steer it with, by tilting the, the phone? Uh, it has two built-in different mechanics for steering. One of them is tilting. The other one is on-screen buttons. But I will say um, I was able to take the on-screen buttons and basically use my GPD uh, physical buttons and it, it just worked like a charm. Just, you know, hit the, hit the gas. It, no, no, I'm sorry. One of the game modes was game pad. There's only two or there's only three buttons in the game. I want to say gas, brake, nitro, two buttons, at least did gas, two buttons did brake, two buttons did nitro. So I had a choice of which buttons to use. Uh, there was no deep configuration, but you didn't need it. You just said game pad steering worked automatically with the joystick and you just tap buttons until you found gas, tap buttons until you found brake, tap buttons until you found nitro. Worked like a charm. If charms, in fact, did work. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah, and unfortunately, this is, again, I said this before, I believe the game maker has purposefully not put a video in the uh, Play Store seeing what kind of draw he can get. And then when the draw slows down, I think is when they'll put a video for it in the store. So I'm on YouTube right now for people watching the video and you can see the video of the gameplay. And I want to just really quick throw out there. If you like to watch the video, Patreon video is the best because I'm cutting out the beginning, cutting out the end, making it tight and uploading it. And it should be a higher quality video. Don't know if it actually is, but secondly, now, an hour to two after we record, I'm posting the post-produced, completely finalized post-produced audio to Patreon. Uh, if you're a Podnuts monthly donator, if you see the things in Patreon that you like, 
Stop the PayPal monthly donation and go over to Patreon. Join there and you'll get all the uh, benefits and you can still donate. Um, but yeah, don't stop say, the PayPal and do the Patreon. That's even well, better. Well, you know, you know. While we're on the subject, um, just a qu- couple of quick shout outs. Alexander Seams, I'm going to go with that. And uh, um, Chris Palmer, both just uh, pledged for $5 a month. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. And I want to recognize you guys for that. Yes, thank you guys very much. And Alexander is, I believe, in Belgium. I'm not positive. Uh, but he is coming over this year. I believe he's landing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he's driving down the coast to uh, Disney World because he wants to see this side of America. He's going to see a lot of uh, trees. That's when I told him. A lot of trees because more than a couple hours, you're just going to be driving, and there's just trees. But he's going to try to stop in uh, in or around Baltimore so we can have a meal. So that would be awesome. Uh, if you're not watching the video right now, you're listening to the audio feed, I, I encourage you to go just watch the last two minutes of the video. Uh, Door was just just now Chris Farley in uh, Wayne's World when he was saying he's going to get on the plane here and slide over to the it – was, it was exactly that <laughs> for just, just a couple of seconds there. It was great. Exactly. It could be worse, but it's pretty bad already. Wow, he seemed to have a lot of information for a security guard. <laughs> all right Eric, since i just broke door you, you bring us up an app what do you got all right man th- now this one is crazy i i purposely brought this app because i love the video so much and i i go to look at it now and i don't see a video on there so I'll, i'm gonna put it in the chat but i i might need a little help with you guys finding the video for it and I, I don't understand how, how it would go away and i can't figure out where to type in my my link. I don't have a. I don't have a place to type. Let me scroll down. Oh, there we go. Okay. That was weird. I've never had a, a place where I couldn't type. Anyway, um, this is another race game. It's called Rush and Crush, and I brought it specifically so you guys could see the best video I've ever seen for a game ever. And it's not there no more. Isn't that a disappointment? Mm. Anyway, this is like. Um, Almost like an endless, an endless runner driving game again, where you just uh, blow up. You kind of run into cars, and you get different weapons to use against other cars. And uh, but the video really explains it better than the. And the video is much. It's kind of like a photorealistic video. Okay. Just, well, I will say when I go to YouTube, Rush and Crush trailer is what I search for. I do see a video. It's only a minute 30 long. That would be it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's rush and the letter N and in the, in the word crush, K R U S H. Not, it's not like Russian crush, like we're trying to crush Russians or anything like that. It's rush and crush, but with an N. And a K for the, yeah, it's a horrible name, but. Well, so far the video doesn't look like a game. It looks real. R- but then right. I see chickens and it looks that, fake. That is absolutely the video. Yep, that's the one I was trying to explain, and it and that used to be part of the Google Play Store when you'd see that. But now I don't know, maybe it had too many pixels or it was too high quality to put in the Play Store, so they took it off. I I don't know how that works, and maybe that's what's happening with these other really good games. Maybe they're taking their videos off because they're too good, and that's I don't know. Is there some sort of suck quotient that you can't be over? If it's too good, they just kick you out of the store? I, I'm i starting to wonder because that, that it's an extremely entertaining and visually pleasing video for this for this racing game. It's all about chickens trying to cross a road and right. a bunch of death cars uh, racing right in front yeah. of them. I can say with the name of Rush and Crush, okay, I have, I have a mental profile of a type of game. Okay. This unbelievably blows any expectations out of the frigging known universe. This is not a Russian crush looking game. This is a unbelievably good looking game. So that's the video for the game you're basing that on. Yeah, the game it itself. <laughs> yeah. So the game itself is it, it's a fun game. 
but it, it could be a lot better. It's nothing like the video. The video was definitely, I, I bet they spent $15,000 making that video, I bet. The game. Well, I'll say here's, here's one thing I don't like. Going to the Gay Play Store, clicking on the images, first image, Russian Crush, whatever. Second image looks like it's showing gameplay, and then every other image after that is doing its best to show you the bust of a female. Yes. Still shots. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on. The, there's a lot of these girls in the, the pre-play area where you add well, friends. Not suitable for my kids. Add stuff. It says E for everyone. I beg to differ. Well, they're dressed. They're, they're animated. Just, you know. You know, animation, yeah. dressed. Yeah, they're not naked or nothing. But so, but the game doesn't. You can't use a controller. You can't use a game pad. It's only on screen, which is no fun. And it, it's basically you switch lanes. You just move over, you know, like a like a endless runner. You're switching lanes to grab coins and and grab power ups and and ram into other people and and you got to beat a boss and and stuff like that at the end of at the levels. But but that okay. video, man, <laughs> that video. The if video that, was really good. If that was a, that 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 video, whatever that you know, if that was a game, that wouldn't that'd be better than an Xbox One game, if that could yes. be real. Okay, Eric, I'm I'm just gonna fill you in on this part. Maybe where you're at, you don't realize this kind of thing in the ultra hyper sensitive world of today. The video. If, even if the women are not naked, it's still sexist and still to a degree inappropriate for younger eyes. My youngest son, do you, you could never, would never guess what I'm getting him for Christmas after I tell you, if I didn't tell you, the last time he got in trouble in school was for making a honking sound and squeezing the buns of a 20-something-year-old attractive teacher okay and that's the last time he got in trouble in school but you'll never guess what i'm buying him for christmas that i know he's going to virtually pee himself out of happiness when he opens up um man let me think about this for just a second mark are you, are you, are you gonna take a guess too i don't i don't even know where to go with it i don't i got nothing yeah first it's i was book series i'll start with that okay book series. oh diary of a wimpy kid yeah oh, did ben. i nail it really no. no. What'd okay. you say? Diary of a Wimpy Kid? No. No. Um, no it, I, yeah. I, I, I'll Fifty Shades of Grey. No. <laughs> it's a book series that I believe started out with Pinkalicious. And it's the Pinkalicious, which is Silverlicious, Greenalicious, uh, all the different color liciouses, and everyone is basically about a princess and my son will he was in the library last week in school and they didn't let him get a book and he laid on the ground and cried because he really wanted to get silverlicious and they wouldn't let him have it why because he got a book earlier the week or something like that i don't know oh okay so i'm so for christmas i'm buying him the entire Lalicious, whatever book set. Even though when I looked at it, I can say tell you right now. Traditionally, if my father would have looked at that when I was my son's age and thought to himself, "Am I buying this for my son?" The answer would have been, "Hell no. This is for a girl." But we, but we have to be more sensitive to other people's needs and wants. And if my son wants. To read a book about princesses, well, I'm not going to stop. You hey, are defining you, classic gender roles, my friend. If you can uh, get a kid to read, I think that's a plus. Exactly. I almost, he's not reading my comp. Okay, let's start there. So that alone makes me happy. He's reading something else. As long as he can read anything, I will support it. As long as it's not my comp or something like What's that. What's my comp? It's the Hitler mein Kampf, Nazi My Struggle Hitler's book. Oh, okay. Well, I'm happy you don't know that, Eric. It reaffirms my it's great world that history. You're a good guy. Aww. Oh. Okay. I I do have the uh the No, never mind. All right, well, let me jump in here, bail you out, uh, with an email from Joe Licata who uh <clears throat> tells us about a game called Worms 3. 
says, I love playing this game on my Xbox. Now it's on my phone. You get 30 seconds to make a strategic move to take out your opponent turn by turn, fling grenades, shoot bazookas, or fly a kamikaze sheep. You heard it right. Kamikaze sheep. You can play against the computer or online with your friends. Pretty awesome. Um, I don't have enough Google Play credit to play this game personally, but Joe says it's pretty awesome. Worms 3. Hmm. Hey, do you know what this game is, Mark? I do not. Okay, and I don't know how to describe it. But you know and I know, back in the day, back in the day, there was the game where you could have two, three, or four players on a screen. You didn't move, and you had angle and power. Oh. And you could take turns hitting each other. The old tank game. That's basically Artillery. what this looks like. Yeah. But, of course, it looks much better. My favorite was, version out on the PC was called Scorched Earth. Uh, I think it was a DOS game. Um, loved that thing. It was written, I forgot what language it was written in, but I was able to go in and, and hack it. And I had it. I had made special weapons where if you got anywhere within, like, 25% of the screen, it would it would take out your opponent. That was fun. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. What's uh, Well, there was, I'll say similar to that, then. With this, you can get power-ups that I'm sure some of them can do that kind of thing. There's a there's a there's one of those Flash games I used to play years ago where you were uh, like three ducks on a raft. and you were, Anyway, it's it's all variations on the same game. Yeah, I love those kind of games. But uh, it's $5.99, uh, rated everyone 10 plus. Excuse me, $4.99. Oh, I was going to say, well, I'm like, wow, I must have a secret Play Store. I'll say 99% of the money that they're charging for this is because of the name recognition from the Xbox thing. Cause I mean, if you look, it's from a top developer, 62,000 reviews. That's a lot of reviews. Okay. Um, it says between 500,000 and 1 million installs. And there's other in-app purchases that range from $0.99 cents to $2.49 per item. Wow. Ooh, wow. Wow. We're in the wrong business. Well, thank you, yeah. Joe, for sharing this with us. That's a very cool-looking game. I might I might actually end up buying this one. I I don't know. Maybe it'll be on you know, Cyber Monday's over. It probably won't be on sale. But I still have some. I've been, I've been answering questions like a, like a insane man um just building up them play store dollars yeah you guys have gotten me into that i I, i've earned like five dollars total so far but hey it's you know it's fine they keep asking me have you visited this place recently uh no here's a dime for saying no (laughs) right exactly (laughs) it gets me it usually i i don't say no too often that could be a personality i say low well, no, no, and I think I might have figured it out. Here. I think they're checking to see if you're lying because they know. No, 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 no. Like with me and um, me and uh, Mark go to heavily populated areas. It probably doesn't get pinpoint accuracy, but it knows you are around something. Right. And when we're around something, we could be around sixty to eighty things, and maybe your town is more flat. So maybe when you're around something, you really could only be around two or three things. Right. No, absolutely. That that's true. So maybe so maybe that's what they're thinking, maybe. Ever I don't go to Walmart a lot, but every time I do, it asks me if I went to Walmart <laughs> on that day. I got one recently. Are you a car enthusiast? Why? Yes, I like cars. Do you read car magazines? No, not really. And that was it. It was like two questions, and <laughs> yeah, here, guess, here's twenty cents. <laughs> your email tomorrow. You free car and driver one yes. year subscription. Yeah. yeah, I just got that, or no, I got auto automobile or something like that. It's nice. It's funny. And Jeff Gordon on the cover this month. Well, and, and I just got to throw out there just so Joe knows this. Okay, if you want Joe, shoot me an email. I'll find a link on YouTube. Of course, I said YouTube again, Mark. We're Every time I hear Joe Licata in my head, I picture a uh, wrestling announcer screaming <laughs> Hurricane Rana. Because <laughs> back when that was a brand new quote unquote move to wrestling, every time somebody did it, they would literally scream like, I can't believe he just did it. Hurricane Rana. <laughs> so every time I hear, every time I read Joe Licata, every time in my head, it's Joe Licata. 
just like in the sound of Hurricane Rana. So thank you, Joe. You bring a smile to my face every time I see an email. That's fine. All right. So, uh, Dor, why don't you bring us another app? Well, I say yes, and of course, I am I am damaged goods, and at least I admit it. Um, okay, the next thing I'm Sometimes going to Sometimes it's bring... best to just let it go and say, move on to the next app. I don't know. See, that's maybe too much um, uh, frozen, but I'm not going there. Uh, okay, I'm going to bring you another game. This is one of those games I personally think is very hard to describe and categorize. They call it Adventure. Okay, uh, this to me looks like one of those... Um, discovery research kind of games where you basically just have to keep digging to find information out. It's not a shooter. It's not a sci-fi. It's not a fantasy. It's not a racing. It's not a platformer. It's none of that. Uh, it's like a third person, almost um, resident evil camera or uh, another world kind of camera where your job is to go through the environment and what you're looking for is basically stuff that cannot be seen with the normal eye is the only way I can explain it. Um, really, really good looking game. I'm, I'm, I'm firmly believing you need this on a big tablet. If you are trying to experience this on a small phone, you're just not going to get it. It is it is two dollars ninety nine cents, and I think I forgot to say the name. Lost Echo hmm. is the name of this. Um, it's trying to be another, like its own virtual world, and you're looking for clues, looking for this part of reality that you cannot see with your naked eye, kind of thing. It is serious. So interesting. Um. It's like it's, so. It shows like the guy running through a uh, an office building, or whatever, and then like, I, do you press a button to see the alternate reality? Because basically, then it just shows the shell of the inside of the building with no drywall, and that's really neat. Really, really well done. I literally, well, I literally just got my quote unquote free extended trial to this today, so I'm not really too far into it, but it looks really good. This is one of those games. It's just different enough and interesting enough. It got my attention to keep tinkering with it to see if I can figure out what in the hell this is. This is almost like a point and click adventure discovery app, is the way I think I would explain it. Huh. Yeah, I'm. I'm just not getting it at all. Uh, maybe I'm just too dense at this point. But uh, the- no, Mark. That just means it's mysterious. Okay. It reminds me of uh, Myst, um, you know, sure. super popular PC game that I didn't understand why it was popular at all. Well, after playing it for three or four hours, it would make perfect sense to you, Mark. Okay. I just, uh, <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm not into acquired tastes, olives, beer, Myst. You know, if you don't like it at first, why keep doing it? Um, I challenge that, Mr. Coffee. Yeah, well, that is such an acquired taste for a show. Not true. Not the not the way I make it. It's not. I don't know. I still haven't had it like that. I will have to. Okay. Well, I can. Yeah. I can me too. That. Um. I I do want to say. Um. Two three shows ago, we did a random drawing for the uh, that old uh, Zen phone. Not old Zen phone, but that oh, Zen yeah. phone. I never heard from the guy. So. That- the guy whose name I can't remember, if it was you, I'm just waiting to send it to you. And if I don't hear from you by next show, I think we're going to pick another number. That's weird. I believe it was that- Alan, Alan Kennedy in the UK. Aaron Kennedy? Alan Kennedy? And it was Kennedy. I would never expect Kennedy. something like that to happen in a giveaway. That's just... Hmm. I just wanted to throw that out there before we say before I say, Eric, next app, please. Next app. Okay, this is called Prune, and it's not it's not a, a geriatric app at all. It, well, kind of could be, I guess. Is it this like is, a digital bonsai? Yes, it is very much like a oh. digital bonsai. So, um, it's a very artistic, stylized game. Basically, what you have to do is you you plant you plant a a sprout by flicking up on the screen. And then, like, a, a little trunk starts. And then off of that, branches form. 
and you have to swipe with your finger to prune off certain parts to make it grow towards the light. And then if you get enough of these branches into the light, flowers will start um, growing on it. And if you get enough flowers or yellow flowers, then you can move on to the next level, and you've done it well. You don't want to make it grow towards the dark areas of the screen. And there's a bunch of different... It's a puzzle game, kind of. But it's just uh, very neat how it's done, and the style of the game is really cool. I, it, it, it's got... I would be surprised, you know, I'm I'm surprised Burt Bonte didn't make this, because it's such a unique mm. game that hasn't been done before, super simple to learn, can be very challenging as, as you move through the levels. It's really beautiful. It is, yes. And it, it's not well, obvious you- what to do as far as moving your, your plant towards the light. It doesn't shout out to you, and that's what I hate. You know, I hate those little explanations, like, hey, then you got to do this. Oh, okay, let me hit through that. I want to play this game. Then you got to do this. Okay, let me next, 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 next. None of that. Just here you go. And then as you're playing it, you're like, oh, I see. That does better when it's in the light. So, yeah, that makes sense. It's a plant. I like that. I like that. Let me learn on my own. Right. And uh, if Mark doesn't know, that was one of the trademark hallmarks of Bart Bonte games. Simplicity graphics. And literally, when you hit go, you're just dropped in the middle of the game, and it's your job to do it. Yeah. There was no hand-holding, there was no excessive hand-holding, and no over-explanation, and no setup. It was just play the game. That only works if the game is simple and self-explanatory. Um, but modern games, no, modern, I don't know, commonly I see games that are so complex that you can't do them without a tutorial. Um you know, and they both appeal to different things, but I like this idea of just dead simple, uh, simple but not easy. I like that. If you see, if you see the the white like uh, check mark thing, that's the only. It tells you to swipe like that to break off branches. That is its only explanation. You don't have to hit next. You don't have to. You know, it's just super basic. It does kind of tell you that part, but and and how to start the the sprout going. It is, um, I don't know how much it is. It says it's half off for a limited time. And uh, I've already got it installed and purchased, so I'm not sure how much it costs. And it, this was Time's game, Time Magazine game of 2015. It says $1.99. I don't know if that is the half off or if you get half off the $1.99. Hey, how can it be game of 2015? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering what is, is somebody at Time smoking? <laughs> because don't get me wrong, this is a fine game. It's a very fine game. But in order to be game of the year, in my to my humble opinion, you have to do a couple things. You either have to be unbelievably popular, unbelievably successful with money, or you have to be groundbreaking in some way. And while this is a fine game, I do not see any of those aspects in this game. Unless, of course, the game developer paid time to say, call me game of the year. I don't know. Hey, you know, they're right down the street, Madison, Wisconsin. Maybe I can go visit them and uh, ask them how they got that. It's cool. Shout out to the Midwest. There's there's a, an awful lot of marketing speak as I'm reading this description here. Yeah. Prune I can tell you right is now. a love letter to trees. A game about the beauty and joy. Of cultivation. Well, I'm just and Eric. No ill will towards you at all, brother. But the next game I'm bringing is going to blow that out of the water. <laughs> this should have been game of the year from time. This next game should. It, it's definitely closer. Well, bring it on! Don't hold us. Well, yeah, space, man. Okay? Well, it only has 88 chair. reviews. 88 reviews. It only has. It only has 88 reviews. It's only at version 1.3. This is new. So, preach yourself. It's called. I don't even know how to pronounce yeah. it. Hey, uh, Tesselatel. Prunes so only. At, tes- prunes at one point oh point four. So you know, if we're, if we're going there, well, that's because you know they don't. Because there's how much can you, you know, do with this? Is this is a mathematical uh, term. Tesselatel. Okay, it's math. Tessellate. See that's tessellate. See that's why we have Mark on this. Yes. Um, there is no way to explain what this is except for this is mind 
a lot of people, a lot of people have tried to improve upon Tetris. Okay, first off, let's just say it's impossible to improve upon Tetris. These guys are really close. This is a really interesting game. Uh, download it. I encourage you to download the game. Uh, it's, I believe it's free. It is. Uh, yes, it is. Play it for four seconds and you will immediately get the hook to this game. And the hook is a piece drops down. As soon as the piece hits, it turns out the entire board is in a cube cylinder that as soon as the piece hits, it rotates 90 degrees. So the piece you just landed has an actual different shape than what you expected it to have, but now it turns. And then the next piece comes down, and it drops, and when it hits, it turns. This is unbelievably mind-catching. I want to say mind. This, this is unique. It, it, it is an actual unique change on your classic Tetris, and you have to play it to actually witness it. But I think it's really actually cool, well, and it's definitely hard. Installed for sure, man. I can't right. wait to well, try it. On, on, the, on the heels of this, I have to bring a game that is not an Android game. I apologize for sullying the, t- the waters of Android app addicts. It's, it's old, so you guys might have heard of it. It's called Not Tetris. And it's uh it's a uh, you can download it for Windows Linux or o- OS X, uh, OS 10x 10xx, um, uh, or it's uh, you can get the source code where I think it's Java. It's Tetris with physics. So when you hit the rotate, it keeps rotating. And when you oh. it's like it's like Tetris uh-huh. with with uh, with jetpacks. Uh huh. It's like as soon as you click the start button. Everything just kind of falls, so it's not that neat um, rows that you get in Tetris. Everything is there, and you still got to figure out a way to clear off rows with everything just a big pile of junk at the bottom. Oh, and they don't even line up at the bottom. I thought, no. I thought, I thought as you spun them, they would spin, but then they'd fall in place. No, they just keep <laughs> piling up with gaps and sideways pieces and wedges. And oh, wow! It's one of those games that you will love and hate at the same time. I was gonna say. I'm pretty sure I would have a near mental breakdown. <laughs> a part of me would like it, but part of me would literally, I think I would go a little bit cuckoo. Huh. And even when you do clear a row, they don't, they don't clear evenly. So, and, and so you can like hit, drop something and shake something else loose. It's pure physics. And I want to say it was uh stuff. Stab yourself. Stab uh, yourself. Net. Yeah. Neat. Now, I believe it was uh, Stuff You Should Know podcast literally right now is doing, uh, it wasn't that one. They're doing a like multi-parter on Tetris. Uh, maybe it was Stuff, Stuff Blow Your Mind? Let me see. Some, uh, it was clickbait. He yeah, found yeah, it. Yeah. No, he yeah. can't find it. Stuff to... Stuff to blow your mind, the podcast. They uh, literally are right in the middle of doing a multi-parter on a Tetris. Pretty interesting, actually. Talking about the where it, where it came from, what it's based upon, uh, what impact it's had in society, you know, stuff like that. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, so there's 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 a game and a bonus game, and uh, I don't have any more emails to read to you guys. We're uh, you you took a vacation as we did apparently. So uh, uh, AAA at podnuts dot com. Send us an email, and I will uh, let you know. Uh, I will read it on the on the show. But right now, I don't have anything else. So we just got to bounce back to Eric for his next app. All right, man. Um, in the immor- in the immortal words of Jay Z, I got ninety nine problems. You ever heard that song, Mark? I have like heard it? of that song. Okay, uh, it's a great song. It's about uh, getting pulled over on the side of the road by a, a police officer with a drug dog. But anyway, this is the game called Ninety Nine Problems. It has nothing to do with drugs or uh, thuggery. And uh, but this door, I'm gonna say you may not like this at all. But uh, take a look at the video and tell me if you would like it. 
It's uh, basically it's a super super simple looking game with uh, squares, and um, you just tap your screen to bounce. Oh. And you just bounce around and not run into oh, other oh, squares. Oh. That's the whole thing. Is don't run into anything. Dude, this does not look easy. No. So this is right up the same genre as uh, the uh, oh, the bird game. Not Angry Flappy Bird. bird. Flap, yeah, Flappy Bird. So, Eric, can you get past the first stage? I think I did once, yes. No, 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 it counts. It counts how many you go, how many, how many dots you pass. And no, I didn't get very far. Oh, so each dot is, is one of the 99? Yes. No, me no, me no play this game. No, me no play. <laughs> so, w- if you tap left, it goes left, and if you tap right, it goes right. No, if you tap it, it it goes. Okay. So you don't even get to control that. Yeah, you bounce off the Here's sides. One and side stuff. of the screen to the other. Yep. Yeah, it's a. Go, speaking of go stab yourself, this is this little game may bring you to do that. Anyway, that that was it. Ninety nine problem. Great, great name. Great name. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to decide whether this is brilliant or or torturous. Maybe it's both. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah uh, torturous. <laughs> yeah. You got anything else? Let's go ahead and empty your tank. Here. Yeah, I, I do. I got uh, Stickman Trials Two, and I can't remember if we've brought this before though. That's the only, that. I don't think so. That's why I'm holding back, and I haven't got the link up quite yet. And now I don't see it in my. Maybe it was just Stickman Trials. I'm, oh, I swear it was part two, though. But here, I'll put the link to Stickman Trials in there. It's another. And, and I'm just kind of. You know, I'm stuck on these games. You know what I mean? These little motorcycle games where you, you know, do crazy stunts on a. You don't really race anybody, you just do crazy stunts. Well, you do a time trial. Yeah, yeah. Get it in here. I'm sorry. It wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't ready for the back-to-back smackdown of apps here. Yeah, I'm okay. just always, always throwing you curves. So it's uh, it's along those lines, but it's a stick man riding a bicycle, and you get. I think over time you upgrade to uh to motorcycles and stuff as as the game progresses, or if you spend cash, probably. I did want to mention though. I've got a couple new devices in the house. Um, I, I broke down, you know, I've always complained about my Nexus 7 2012, my Nexus 7 2012 edition, I've always been complaining about. So, um, I gave that to my son and I bought this, they had this deal, um, at, I don't know, it was before Black Friday, but it was the Dell 10 inch 5000 Android, um, two gigs of RAM, only 16 gig, but I bought a 64 gig, uh, SD card for it, and um, it's got an Intel Atom processor, and it's running 5.0.1, I think. Um, and then I went on eBay and bought the the keyboard, which you can flip over both ways. You can pop it up like a, like to read recipes on, or you can flip it over like a laptop, and it makes a cover. I did also buy the the cover for it. On eBay, the one that's made for it, though, it it actually, if you buy it and put it on, you can't flip the keyboard on the opposite way. It can only work like the laptop way. So I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna throw that back on eBay and sell it again. I don't know, it don't really work for me. The, the the it's not a looker. This this lap this tablet is not a looker, but it does have a rubber all the way around it. The the whole edge of it is rubber, so it could probably take a drop or two, maybe. It's got a mini HDMI. It's got um, a USB port. Has uh, a micro USB port. Um, like I said, it's got it's got great speakers. It's really loud. I don't know. It's it's it, is the so is the keyboard anything else than a keyboard? Is it? No, uh, you know, is I is there a battery? battery it said that it was in the eBay listing, but I don't believe it is. But it could. I, I don't know. I can't verify. Is it heavy? It. It's heavy, yes. The keyboard's heavy. Then it might be, yeah. So it might be. Um, I don't know. I don't know for sure yet. Well, is there a micro USB 
socket on the keyboard? There's not. So I don't know if it takes the charge from the tablet or not. So that, yeah, that's what that would. Maybe you have to plug. Okay, now here's the gimmick. If you plug up micro USB to the tablet, okay, mm -hmm. to power to charge it while the keyboard is connected, you should be able to go home settings battery, and it should allow you to pick what battery you're looking at. Oh. You oh, okay. I'll try. I'll try that. Okay. Yeah. And and then the other question is, how's the keyboard? Because I I'm a firm believer now, a good keyboard can make a okay tablet have a good experience. Yeah, the keyboard's nice. It's got a touchpad, so basically your your laptop, it's just like a laptop in that way. You can scroll, two finger scroll and everything. Um, the t the touchpad is quite sensitive. I've noticed as far as like hovering around on a web page or something, it may need. Uh, and I hadn't I hadn't gone into the settings to change my sensitivity of the of the touchpad or anything yet. Um, the, the screen is not super HD or anything like that. It's probably one of the least, you know, I'm so used to these, uh, eight AMOLED screens on all my Samsung devices and the Nexus sevens and the Nexus, the old Nexus 10 I had. So this is one of the first IPS screens I've even had. Um, so it's just, it's nothing spectacular, nothing like I'm used to, but, um, but like, like, you know, it should help with battery life as far as uh what mark has been telling me in his super hd screen so i i'm okay with that you know it's big enough that i can see just fine so yeah so i think for 150 bucks it was it was a decent deal um and there was a lot of tablets on sale for black friday and, and a lot of uh a lot of what i thought was pretty good deals you know a lot of 150 dollar tablets with 2 gigs of ram um good size tablets there's some nice eight inch ones that I, I kind of liked. Um, yeah, the, the era of the tablet is upon us. It really is. They, they're becoming so commoditized now that, that cheap Chinese knockoffs can be as good as the, the, uh, flagship devices. And, and there was some that got, I, I saw some for $20 for a seven inch tablet. <laughs> like, they're like, ah, oh, it, it's gotta be better. You know, I remember when the $50 tablets, you know, they weren't even capacitive touchscreen. I'm sure that that's yeah. not, that can't be a thing anymore. Um, but yeah, I was, I was impressed with some of the deals they had on, on tablets this, this Black Friday and Christmas, uh, or Thanksgiving ish area. Well, since we moved into hardware, I, I, let me give you a follow up brief, uh, re report on the, uh, Moto 60 generation two. I told, you know, last time I talked about it, I had just gotten it that day because I broke my original one and I told you I wasn't sure about it. After about a month of it now, I can tell you that all the problems I had with the first gen Moto 60 solved. Um, the uh, battery routinely lasts me 18 hours with, with 20% left over. Uh, oh, wow. The, uh, the ambient screen that was more off than on gone it's always on it dims but there's always a display so even in a in a dark meeting room i can glance down and see what time it is um all the issues that i had with the first generation and i you know i bought it knowing it was a first generation watch totally fixed uh without reservation i say uh the second generation moto 360 is a is a watch that you have to get nice good to hear wow well i'm to, i'm uh, the only thing i'm happy about is the battery because I know that's one of the sticklers. If the battery doesn't last a good solid work day and hopefully a solid day, it's really hard for people to adopt it. So I, I took this off the charger at 6.30 this morning. It is now uh, 10.13 p.m. Um, it's been on all day, screen on time all day. I'm at 40% battery. Wow. Yeah, battery is not a problem anymore. Just It's just not. Yeah, I, that I, that I just broke the watch band on my on my um, G watch, and that was another thing that was cheap this this Thanksgiving was uh, they had fifty dollars G watches. And I I still like that watch, man. Um, I, I I I I'm sure I would love the three sixty too, yeah. but the the only real issue the the only nagging issue with the three sixty is the flat tire. And and I, I understand some people are OCD enough they just can't get past it. It doesn't bother me after a while. I just got used to it. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, it gives me a light sensor, which I think it's the only one in its class that that has that. So it automatically adjusts the brightness when the when I go, uh, you know, in uh, inside from outside. Oh, and the other day uh, I was outside, full on bright sunlight. I had sunglasses on, and I looked down and checked the time on my watch, and I thought, wait a minute, I couldn't do that before with my other one. So yeah, yeah that's again, good. all the problems I had gone. Well, the the screen technology, I'll tell you right now. That was actually a simple fix because I remember my Nokia 810 internet tablet, which coincidentally is virtually identical form factor length and width to my OnePlus phone. Um, it had a screen on it that I could literally be out in the brightest of the brightest of the brightest days, look at it, and I could see it just fine, but its colors would be desaturated. Right. So I'm sure that's what the watch is doing to where all you care about is contrast. Can I see the white and the black? Mm -hmm. And bam. So that's good. Do you uh, do you have Watchmaker installed on your phone? I do. My yeah. primary watch face is Watchmaker. Yeah. Is uh, is it any of them by Mark Soralt, one of our listeners? Uh, no, I don't believe so. The the one that I like is uh, from a Frenchman. I can't remember his name. His his website is Bad Apps dot fr hmm, okay um, which actually i think he's stopped doing that now but uh hey, i'm not a, i'm not a guy who changes a watch face every day i find something I like and i stick with it i've had the same haircut since 1987 so we weren't know. gonna say nothing but no uh, the, uh, the i i don't change it every day but every now and then i, I just get that itch man i'm like ah, i gotta try f find something different and mark make me such awesome watch faces for me where like it does everything i touch it and i can bring up all kinds of different apps right in his watch face which i don't really see a whole lot of that going on out there um and they, and they look nice plus i said eric cardini on so that was cool too I, I did have one more piece of hardware i wanted to bring though um, and this was, uh, you know, we're always talking about AMZ Review Trader. And we, I actually got a ping from uh, someone from um, Great Britain who's like, oh, I heard you guys talk. Oh, wait, I should do that. Oh, I heard you guys talking about AMZ Review Trader, and I tried it, and it works in the UK too. So that was that's good to know. Um, in case you're from a different country, it might work in your country. An oddly pan-European accent there. It was good. <laughs> yes, it was, but I was going to go with it. Yeah, you were representing all of the EU right there with that one accent. Great. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know if he's from London or with or some the New River. Zealand and a little uh, Australia in there too. The River Seven. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So, so this uh, I on the AMZ Review Trader, I reviewed a Hensoki MQ8 M8Q Amlogic S805 quad core Android TV box. This little puppy. It's a lot of words, man. Ooh. It rolls off the tongue like all of these products do, you know. <laughs> it's, you know I, I considered looking at that, but I just it was so looked so underpowered. So I'm interesting to hear what you interested to hear what you have to say. It's a one gig one gig of RAM. I didn't think that was too bad. Um, you know, and they do looking on the Amazon site, you can get the two gig one, and this has come down quite a bit in price actually from when I bought it, but it works well. I've never had a Cody set up before or a Cody box. And I was, I'm kind of amazed on how much content you can, uh, you know, do some cord cutting with, with a box like this. And it comes with all kinds of stuff installed on it that I wouldn't even uh -huh. know how to install. And might be questionably legal. M maybe when, you know, you've got apps with the word torrent right in them installed on it already. <laughs> um, I don't know. I did. Sick beard. I don't know if I even. Is that one of them? clicked on that app yet but it comes with a lot of apps a lot of video um, consuming apps um, I have to say and plus your favorites like YouTube and Netflix and and, and Hulu and so stuff how does like it that. does it handle you know Netflix full streaming is it which Netflix interface is it is okay. it the, the the latest interface I I'm afraid to put my username and password for Netflix into it. <laughs> so, I, so I've only done things that didn't require any type of uh, identification thus far. Are you are you going to say that in your in your review, Eric? I don't remember if I said that or not. I'm reading the review mm. now. You did not. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I did. Um, it, yeah, it's ready. It's it's definitely ready to watch some media. But uh, oh, I, one thing I was impressed with is that Logitech 
uh, was it K40R, K408R, K400R? I was surprised to this. It was so, yeah. Is it K400R? Yeah. I was surprised. K400R. It was so plug and play with this box. I, I was like, man, I wish I had a Bluetooth keyboard. I'm like, wait, I bought it in a state sale, an extra K400R. So it's just sitting up there. Love that keyboard and, and the. Oh, yeah. And because it, it, this thing comes with a remote, which is almost unusable until you, uh, but with the, with the touchpad, I mean, the remote's fine for going up and down and left and right, clicking on the apps. But if you actually have to move the cursor for some reason, it takes forever. It takes forever to move across the screen and all that. But it's all fixed when you put a, a keyboard with it. That helped. Well, that's, that, that, that's all my new, well, I, I got a new, uh, <laughs> webcam too, but we're not going to talk about that. So, so it's 40 bucks on Amazon. Um, why would I do this as opposed to a Roku stick, which is also 40 bucks? Well, I've had Rokus, and you want to speak of underpowered. Um, the Roku experience I had was much, ne- was not nearly as nice as this. That, those okay. were very slow. The one, and I haven't had one for a while, you know, it's ever since the Chromecast came out, I haven't had a Roku. So the ones that I had were slow and, um, took forever to load things and, I was never really impressed with them. And now some people love them, and the new ones are probably right up there with anything now, but I just haven't went back. I don't know. Well, and I'll say the lower-end Rokus were not great. Back with the old versions, you had to get either the mid or the higher to get a really good experience. But nowadays, I will say even the lower-end Rokus are decent, really decent for the money. I would say just looking at this, what this is, I would think the difference is the ability to do local media. So I, I've used Cody uh, on my Raspberry Pi, uh, a spin of Cody, uh, and I know that it handles local media where the Roku does not at all. So to answer my own question, um, assuming it handles it well, um, you, you can't, this really looks comparable to the Raspberry Pi box that I built. Right? You, can, or, you can't DN, DLNA on a Roku? Um. I don't know. Maybe off of my Plex server. I've never tried. Well, actually, with with the Plex Plex server, yeah. But I didn't like the interface. That's why I'm not using that. And I'll say, here's the other plus to it. You can maybe install Horizon Chase on your TV playlist. That's true. Yes, and I haven't tried it for gaming yet. I I have. uh, I was been gaming on the tablet. And 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 another thing, yeah, you can hook a. I don't know if you can hook a hard drive up to a Roku. You could hook a hard drive up to this too. I think and use it as your server. I believe you may have talked me into it. I may give it a try. Well, I, I, I would like door buys gaming rigs. I buy home theater rigs. Yeah, I'm running. I ran out of TVs, so now you know I I don't have enough TVs in my house for all this stuff. I don't. I only have three TVs in my whole house, so that's the bad part. But I would. I would say, Mark. I think I don't know the two gig version. I think was ten more dollars. Probably worth the upgrade to that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Rib and Android are... Because remember, I didn't pay 40 bucks for this thing. Right. You always want more RAM with Android of any kind, period. But it, yeah, it does have all the hallmarks of illegal China. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope that's not insensitive of me to say, but it's sure... It's, well, it there's illegal Pakistan, right. illegal Brazil, illegal United I, States, I was, illegal Ireland. <laughs> I was just so surprised at how many apps come in pre-installed on this thing. And some of them I don't know if I can even use or would ever use. I mean, there's, it, they've got the world covered, I think, as far as where they're shipping this out to. There's something for you, <laughs> you know, wherever you're at. All right, one, one last uh, offering from the door-to-door geek, be it software or hardware. What do you got for us? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring an app that I don't really completely get. And I want you guys to look at yeah. it. Okay. It's called Real, R-E-E-L, for Reddit. Okay. If you look at the still image from the video, okay, what you see, you don't have to play the video. What you see is YouTube in the video. This is Real for Reddit. And what you see is YouTube. Okay. But then at the bottom, this is what this app does. This is what I can understand. It takes your phone, it turns what would be the bottom advertising banner with ads in it, and it instead displays Reddit in it. 
<laughs> so you can troll yourself <laughs> with a fake ad bar that's not ads, but it's actually Reddit. And it can be there the whole time you're on your phone and just continuously go through the quote unquote reel of displaying Reddit to you like an ad bar. Huh. It's interesting. I mean, it's at least different, but I don't like having ad bars on my screen. So, uh, I don't get this. I mean, if you're a hardcore Redditor and you don't want to actually have to have the app open to do it, um, you know, this, this reminds me of the, uh, the Facebook chat heads, right? You're, if you're so invested in an app that you just can't stand to close it, this is for you. But, um, I've, that's not for me. Yeah. yeah same here. I, I've been, you know what? I, I found a new thing because I've got upstairs, I've got the uh, Amazon Fire Stick. And Reddit also has a video, uh, a video. I don't know if we've ever brought it, a video app. And it just shows the Reddit videos. And you can, the search doesn't work super good, but, um, uh, so I'll find the, uh, but anyway, I, I, I was never really a Reddit user, but I, using that, app i started uh it gives me a lot of neat content to watch it's got like the oh, the yeah. top 10 or top you know whatever if you see something you like you long press on it and it automatically opens a google chrome tab and takes you to that uh reddit entry that that's clever right yeah and eric mentioned video i'm reminded uh he brought up Bart Bonte earlier. That's an older AAA thing. Here's something else I'm going to bring up that's older because he said video. Uh, five by is shutting down. Yeah, I got that e- email today. That was, that was a bummer, man. It is, but my logic is it's one of those things. It did have some popularity, but it was one of those things. The light burnt out fast. Yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of overhead in having human curated videos. Yeah. But I, I, I applaud them for trying, and they were really a cool group. Well, they were in a multi-million dollar building that was in beautiful downtown uh, San Francisco, and they're still owned by Stumble Upon, so they're doing fine. Yeah. Hopefully, they all still have jobs. I'm pretty sure they're probably all there and probably playing the same ping pong and drinking beer like yeah. <laughs> always. But, yeah, they just have switched over to a different topic. Um, that, that video app. I was talking about it's called Vidit for Chromecast. But actually, I've got it installed on the Fire TV stick. Ah. V-I-D-D-I-T. I'll put it in the... I'll uh, put it in the chat room thing. It's, uh... All right, I... It's nice. I think I will... I will call this good. We're... We're, uh... We're devolving into to random things off the top of our head. Oh, wait, that's the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, welcome to the show. <laughs> so, Eric, do you have any final words? Uh, uh, any one last thing that you just have to tell us about Ooh. before you say goodnight? No, no, I've got some off-air stuff I need to talk about, but, yeah, it's all it's all ex- expletives, so i got to save them for afterwards. All right, so, guys, after the podcast, um, stick around. And uh, nothing will happen. Uh, Tor, <laughs> what about yourself? Do you have anything, last words of advice, last pleas for support, anything? Yeah, it's going to be a plea for support. This is the time of year, and I'm late. I should have actually started doing this about three or four shows ago, and I forgot. Uh, this is the time of year where if you're ever going to use podnest.com slash Amazon, it's for Christmas. Now, because some of us out there are Prime members, you can order for the next week, two weeks, and still be fine with getting your gifts. So I'll just ask, if you are using Amazon, do not just go to Amazon.com. Always use somebody's affiliate link whenever you go to Amazon. And if you can use Pondus.com slash Amazon, we will be thankful. All right. Good stuff. And and also, the Patreon, uh, some of you have responded to my uh, guilt, uh, please, but not enough of you. Um, I did have an interesting conversation. Uh, uh, apparently, they've changed some of the rules. I had said, you know, I don't care if you pledge for a penny. Uh, apparently, that's not an option. You can only pledge a minimum of a dollar. However, you can go set your maximum 
um, amount for your pledges total uh, pretty low. So, again, it's not about the money. It's about the show of support. Uh, but the best way to show your support is by throwing money at this guy over here. So, um, you know, buck a month, really. Who can't afford a dollar a month? Um, yeah, because I'll say right now, this show is brought to you by you listeners. Unless you want that to change, you got to do something. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, want to have to sell jewelry we... to you. That's, it's not as <laughs> yeah. fun. Maybe what we should do is, is like some uh, radio and television stations do, is once a year have a share where, like, for a month, all of our shows are begging for money. Um, you know, we could do that. Yep. I don't think you want that. But those those sh- those shows are usually really top shelf stuff when they do that, and we we're still we're still got the you know we could play episode three thirty two because that was really good, but that's about it. So you're saying we'd have to up our game, is what you're saying, or, or bring in some other podcast to fill in for you know for us three, <laughs> or or we could just sell seeds or something like that. Yeah, heirloom seeds. There's never enough. Uh, there's never enough people trying to sell them on podcasts. All right, one last thing before I say good night. YouTube search compressor head. One of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Not appropriate for this show, not not appropriate as in uh not family friendly, but just has nothing to do with Android. Uh but if you enjoy uh good engineering, compressor head. Lots of videos, check it out. And that, that's it. I'm going to say thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week on Android App Addicts. Wow, that was elegantly cryptic. That was kind of a Steve the Amico reference or something. Check it out. Music provided by Steve Cherubino at stevecherubino.com.